Okay, this will be part two of uh, Volumes of Revolution using the w method of washers. And if you haven't done it yet, I definitely would watch part one because it shows where the formulas came from. And also it has an example where you knew the endpoints of the interval uh, when you found the volume of revolution. But let's take a look at a second example now. Well, again, we'll go around the x-axis on this one. But we'll look at an example where you do not know the endpoints to the interval and you have to calculate them first. So let's have this situation. Suppose you had uh, two functions here. Uh, you've got a top function and a bottom function one. The top function is the square root of 25 minus x squared, so it's part of a circle. Uh, the bottom function is just the horizontal line y is equal to 3. Now what you'd like to do is to take this shaded area here in green, and you're going to take both these two functions and roll them around the axis, and when you do, they will sweep out a certain volume, and you want to calculate the volume that uh, swept out. So when you roll them around the axis, they'll look something like this. Now the idea is this green area will roll around the axis, it sweeps it out, and what you really wind up with is what looks like a, is a sphere with a hole through the middle of it. So it will look something like this, uh, and what you'd like to do is if the solid parts will be that green shaded area on the top and the bottom, and suppose that this you were going to cast this thing out of metal, and you would like to know how much metal will it take to uh, create this thing. So what's the volume of metal that would be required? Now, we'll, again, we'll divide them up into uh, disks and washers, and what the individual washers in this case will look like will be something like this. So let's take a look at just one washer inside this interval. If you had it, it would look like this. Now, what you'll have here would be uh, this part right here, will be the width of this thing. So this will be dx. So dx is the width of the uh, washer. And then you'll actually have a couple things here. If you took a look at this height here, from here to here, this height is f of x. And we'll do it in red on this one. Uh, on this side, this height here would be g of x. So f of x minus g of x will give you uh, this washer shape. Okay, so now that we've got the problem set up, what we'd like to do is to uh, look at the formulas, and the formulas that we got on the part one video look like this. Um, remember, it's basically it's just the integral of pi times the top function squared minus the bottom function squared, or in our case, f of x squared minus g of x squared. Now the way we've got this problem set up, uh, if you look at it vertically, uh, this is the function that's on top, so f of x is above g of x, so that's the top function. And this is the one that's on the bottom, so this would be what we're going to call the bottom function. Now you want to find the, the integral that you want to integrate it from. Now here's the problem, is that you need to know where they intersect here, because you're going to integrate it from some point A here over to some point B here. So you're going to go horizontally from A to B. So you need to know uh, what are these two points right here? So x is equal to y. So the first step in this problem, unlike that last problem where you had the endpoints, the first step in this problem is going to be to go ahead and solve and find the intersection points. So we'll kind of put a couple little notes here. So step number one. Uh, so what step one is, is find uh, the intersection points. So find the intersection points. So to find the intersection point, set the two functions equal to each other. So what you'd have would be uh, set the square root of 25 minus x squared. So set f of x equal to g of x, which would be equal to 3. Now to solve this, go ahead and square both sides, and you'd have 25 minus x squared would be equal to 9. So square this side and square this side. Uh, I think I'll move the x squared over here and the 9 over here, which will get me to, I think I'll move this down a little bit. This will be uh, 25, and then move the 9 over here, minus 9, would be equal to, and take the x squared and move it over here. So that gives you 16 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you would get plus or minus 4 will be equal to x. So this actually gives you two points. x is equal to a negative 4, and x is equal to a positive 4. So this one 
And what that is, that's this point right here. So you're going to go from a negative 4 here to a positive. You've got x is equal to 4. And that's going to be this point right here. So x is equal to a positive 4. So the limits on your integral will be from a negative 4 to a positive 4. So now it's just a matter of evaluating the integral. So let's go ahead and we'll do step 2. So what step 2 is, is just uh, evaluate this integral right here. So it'll look like this. The volume would be equal to the integral from, and you're going to go from here to here, across like this. So from a negative 4 to a positive 4. So from negative 4 to 4 of pi times, now again, it's the top function squared minus the bottom function squared. And the way our picture is set up here is that the top function is the square root of 25 minus x squared, so that's going to be f of x. So this is going to be the square root of 25 minus x squared. But remember, the entire thing is squared up here. Then you've got minus g of x, which is 3 squared. Uh, then integrate it with respect to x. Okay, now at this point, it's just a matter of running through that integral. So what this is going to give you, again, I think I'll bring the pi. It's a constant. I'll bring it to the outside. So pi times the integral from negative 4 to 4. Now, on this one, when you square these, again, the square and the square root will cancel out. So that cancels out that and just leaves you with uh, 25 minus x squared. So 25 minus x squared. <clears throat> then you've got minus 3 squared would be 9. So that's going to be minus 9 dx. Now, you can subtract the 9 from the 25, which would give you pi times the integral uh, from minus 4 to 4. And this would become 16 minus x squared dx. So now it's just a matter of solving that. All right, so find the antiderivative of that, which would be 16x minus x cubed divided by 3, evaluated from negative 4 to 4. <clears throat> so go ahead and plug in, first of all, plug in the top number, the 4. So that's going to be, <clears throat> I'll put it in parentheses here, 16 times 4 minus 4 cubed divided by 3. So that's the top one. And then minus, now plug the negative 4 in. So 16 times a negative 4 minus a negative 4 cubed divided by 3. And we'll put parentheses around all that. So that gets you to this. This will become pi times, and 16 times 4 would be 64 minus, and this will be 64 thirds. So there's the first one. And then minus, this will become negative 64. And that'll become a negative 64. Two negatives make a positive. That'll turn into a positive 64 thirds. Okay, now the next thing, uh, since this is over 3, go ahead and put this one over 3. So 64 times 3 would give you 192 thirds. Minus the 64 thirds. And then minus, <clears throat> this would be a negative 192 thirds. Uh, plus 64 thirds. And it's just a matter of running through the fractions. So that's going to give you pi times um, 192 minus 64 would give you 128 thirds. So this will turn into 128 thirds minus, and this will turn into a minus 128 thirds. And then finally, add those two together. So two negatives make a positive. Uh, 128 plus 128 would be 256 pi divided by 3. 
So what this would be, this would be the exact volume of that thing. So if you did this one, uh, this volume right here would be uh, the exact volume. Now, we're assuming that all this is in terms of inches, so in this case it would be cubic inches. So if you change this to a decimal, the final answer would be, if you take that and put it on a calculator, uh, 268.1 cubic inches. So that would be the volume of revolving that thing around the, the x-axis. So let's go back up and again take one last look at the whole process. Okay, so the idea is start with the top function and the bottom function, roll it around the axis, and it sweeps out a sphere with a hole in the middle of it. And again, if you took one section of it, it would look like this little washer here, which is why this thing is called the method of washers. Now here are the formulas you're going to use. Basically, it's the top function minus the bottom function. And if you go vertically from here, it's like from starting from here and going straight up, that's the first function, and it's either the bottom, or some people would call it the inside function. And then if you start from here and go up to the top one vertically, this would be the top function, or what's sometimes called the outside function. So you can work with it either way. Then uh, basically take the two functions. Oh, you have to find the intersection points first. So set f of x equal to g of x here. So you're going to set f of x equal to g of x, uh, solve for x, and that will give you the limits on your integral. So now you know you're going to integrate it from a negative 4 to a positive 4. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers, uh, running through all the math, watch out for the fractions, and you come out with either this is an exact answer if you want it exact, or you can change it into a decimal, and it turned out to be 268.1 cubic inches of metal to make this, uh, this object. So that's an example of uh, volumes of revolution using a uh, method of washers going around the x-axis where you did not know the intersection points of the, fun of the function. In the next video, we'll take a look at uh, going around the y-axis.